Hey everyone, welcome back to this J Knight Battle Report in which Andy's Eldar are taking on my Dark Angels. Eldar, turn one. Andy began by moving the Guardians that have the scatter lasers. That way they can be able to see me and shoot at me this turn. This particular squad has two different controllers for that platform, and I have to kill both of them so that it can't fire anymore. Which is kind of tricky, the way he positioned them. The Dire Avengers then move up their full six inches, so that they can also open fire at my guys. And they are quickly followed by the Avatar, who also moves up just to hide behind them a little bit. He's eager to get into close combat and rip apart some guys. The next step was obviously to move up the Banshees. They are close combat monsters, basically, so you want to get them in close combat as fast as possible. He just decided to screen them with the Dire Avengers. The Guardians and the Platform shoot at the middle squad of Tactical Marines. Needing fours to hit, they roll and get three hits, and those three hits, three wounds. They have to go on the closest guys. I roll and pass all three three plus armor saves. The second squad of guardians then decides to fire at the same unit. Once again, needing fours to hit, roll three hits with the scatter laser, and needing twos, roll three wounds. I've got to put them on the closest guy, and I roll three armor saves. And I only pass one of them, so two tactical marines die. It just took us a moment to figure out who was the closest one to, for the second one to die. The far left pathfinders then shoot at the combat squad with the sergeant. Remember, they're to hit rolls of five or six, count as AP1, and the other ones count as regular, needing threes. So four regular and one AP1 shot. The AP1 goes first, and is a wound. And out of the regulars, two wounds. I roll the two normal armor saves and fail one, so two of my squad dies. However, I roll a lookout sir to save the sergeant, and I pass, so the bolter also has to die. I roll a leadership check for the squad, and I pass with a three. The second squad of pathfinders then shoots at my bikers. Same rules apply, needing threes to hit, five or six is AP1, and they roll a lot of AP1s. The AP1s then go, and one wound of AP1, so the front biker has to die. However, they are fearless, so I don't need to roll a leadership check. The Dire Avengers then run five inches, and run right towards me in the center near the objective, followed by the Avatar running, three inches and following suit with them and finally the Banshees also run and they run three inches to perfectly fit behind the Avatar. Dark Angels turn one. Let's see how I can respond to all that shooting from the Eldar. I began by casting Prescience or Prescience from the Librarian on the squad with the Plasma Cannon. I roll a Psychic Test and pass so they get to Reroll the scatter distance and to hit rolls. Realizing they're in trouble, I run the small squad into cover, five inches. I then move up my bikers in the middle of the table. Once again, I'm kind of forgetting that they are scoring and he gets a victory point for killing them. I remember that later. I then move up the tactical squad to hide behind the bikers and to get close to the objective. And I moved up the second tactical squad, once again just getting better firing range, but I kept the plasma cannon where it was so that it could fire. I then moved up the next combat squad, which had the librarian in it. Once again, this was just to get into better firing range and to take down as many Eldar as possible this turn. The goal of this particular combat squad is to get close to the objective, but not within firing range of the fire dragons. The three-man combat squad fires at the pathfinders. Needing threes to hit, I get two hits with the bolters, and I get no wounds. The Land Raider then pivots and fires all of its weapons at the Avatar. 
The whites are the last cannon, reds are the heavy vulture, threes to hit. Luckily they're twin linked. I end up hitting with all the heavy vulture shots and one of the last cannon shots. And then to wound, I get one wound. So Andy rolls his four plus invol and fails. One wound on the avatar, which is pretty sweet. The Ravenwing squad then fire at the Dire Avengers. Need threes to hit with reroll, both hit. And threes to wound, so one wound. He rolls one four plus armor save and he fails it, so one Dire Avenger dies. And of course it has to be the closest. The Prescienced Combat Squad then fires at the same Dire Avengers. I place the blast so that I can hit three of them with a the plasma cannon. Unfortunately I rolled a scatter distance of seven inches. Luckily it's twin linked. So I roll once again, and I hit directly, so three of them get hit. And he rolls three five-up cover saves, and fails two of them, so two more Dire Avengers die. And also, the gun did not get hot. Balthazar's squad then decides to continue the punishment on the Dire Avengers. The white is the plasma, the red are bolters but neither of the hits actually wound when I roll two ones. And then the Librarian squad decides to also shoot at the Avatar. I roll the Plasma being red, the Plasma rolls a one, so it overheats. I roll an armor save, and I pass it, so the Plasma's still alive. I need sixes to wound, I get one wound on the Avatar. So Andy rolls his three plus armor save, and fails again, two wounds on the Avatar already. So here's what the table looked like after one turn. As you can see, most of the squads have just moved up. The Dire Avengers have taken a hitting, and the Avatar has lost half his wounds. And on my side, I've lost one of my bikers and half of one of the combat squads. So not a lot has happened turn one, just a lot of move up and preparing to shoot. But things are looking okay. So when you're ready, click on the link below to go to part three of this J Knight battle report.